Everything seems to be ready on time this year. The toys have all been finished and are wrapped in lovely, bright Christmas paper. They've all been loaded into the sacks, ready to go on my sleigh, and all I've got to do is deliver them to the girls and boys. Of course, not every year runs as smoothly as this. Oh, yes. Now let me think back. It was very cold in Lapland with snow coming up to my knees and icicles hanging from the roof as big as bananas. As my elves and I are always very busy, we don't normally notice the cold, but one day, Tinker, one of my best helpers, came to me complaining. Santa, I just can't stop s s sneezing at you! <laughs> And every time it happens, the marbles I'm packing into boxes jump off the workbench and all roll away. Achoo! Yes, I see what you mean, I said. Does your head hurt and your nose tingle? That's it, exactly, replied Tinker. There was no doubt about it. Tinker had come down with grotto grumbles and I had no choice but to send him off to bed with a hot water bottle, even though it meant losing one of my best workers. That afternoon, Blinker and Smiler, two more of my elves, were complaining of aching heads and tingling noses. Off they all went to bed, feeling very poorly. They hoped they'd feel better in the morning. It was Christmas Eve tomorrow, our busiest day in Santa's Grotto. After a day's work, all of my helpers normally go and have games in the snow. But this day, I said to them, It's too cold to go outside tonight. Oh, please, Santa, they all cried. Oh, very well, I told them. But keep dry, you can have just ten minutes out there. I suppose I should have known better. Ten minutes later, I had some very wet helpers. Next morning, when I went to wake my elves, there seemed to be a lot of noise coming from their bedroom. Oh dear, I thought. It sounds as if one or two more of them have Santa's grotto grumbles. Imagine my surprise when I found it wasn't one or two, but all of them. There were a lot of tingling noses and a lot of very loud sneezing. Well, there was only one thing I could do. Tuck them up in bed, keep them warm, and give them some of my very special medicine, which nobody liked very much, but was particularly good for grotto grumbles. No sooner had I left the elves, I was in the workshop, finishing the toys. There were trains and bikes to be painted, and prams that needed wheels. There were teddies without any noses or eyes, and even some dolls without clothes. I looked around, and didn't quite know where to start. But I did all the painting first so it would be dry in time, and from there I went from one job to another. I just went from one workbench to the next, finishing the toys, wrapping them in paper, and putting them into sacks ready for the sleigh. By six o'clock, everything was just about done. My feet were aching, my fingers were numb, but all the toys were ready in time for Christmas Day. Nobody was going to be disappointed. I thought I'd have five minutes rest in front of the fire. I had plenty of time to start my deliveries. I felt quite hungry, having not had time to eat. But I do look forward to coming down those chimneys and eating the mince pies that everyone leaves for me, so I just had a nice cup of tea to keep me going. It was so lovely and cosy and warm in front of the fire. 
I felt myself going off into a dream world where it was Christmas all the time. And of course, nobody ever felt poorly, especially with Grotto Grumbles and... Achoo! Oh, something was tickling my nose. I jumped up, and you know, to my surprise, Vixen, one of my reindeer, was rubbing my face with his nose. Vixen, what on earth are you up to? You should be resting, you know. We've got a very busy night ahead of us, in fact. But Vixen interrupted with a very panic-stricken voice. Santa, we should have left hours ago. It's already quarter to twelve. Quarter to twelve? What are you talking about? It was six o'clock when I sat down. How can it be nearly midnight? But Santa... You fell asleep. Vixen tried to explain. Fell asleep? Fell asleep? How could I possibly fall asleep? Santa never falls asleep on Christmas Eve. I was quite taken aback. I didn't think I'd fallen asleep, and certainly not for six hours. But Vixen was most insistent. It's because you've worked so hard today, Santa. And I heard this strange trumpeting sound, so I came to see what the noise was. It was you, fast asleep and snoring. Snoring? I don't snore in my sleep. Oh, Santa, please, just look at a clock. Vixen was quite upset by this time, so I went to find my watch. I looked and looked again and couldn't believe my eyes. Ten minutes to midnight. Only ten minutes to go, and it was Christmas Day, and I'd not delivered one present. I remember that moment very well. All I could do was to run round in circles, shouting, Get my boots! Get my coat! The elves came running in to see what was going on. Tinker, Blinker, Smiler and Titch were feeling a lot better, and when Vixen explained what had happened, they helped to load up the sleigh and make sure no toys were left behind. Vixen had woken all the other reindeer, and they were ready in front of the sleigh. In five minutes, we were off and away. To this day, I will never know how we got round to every house that very cold Christmas Eve. The reindeer flew faster than they'd ever done before, and I was up and down those chimneys as quick as a cat up a tree. I certainly had no time to stop and eat mince pies, and it was almost light when I'd made my last delivery. In fact, I was nearly joining one family for breakfast, which wouldn't have done at all. <laughs> When I finally arrived back in Lapland, my reindeers and I were very worn out. I made sure Vixen and the others were fed and watered. Well done, everyone, I said. You've all worked especially hard tonight. But I don't think any of them hurt me, as they were very sleepy, so I left them to rest. I could smell lovely cooking smells coming from the kitchen, and there I found most of my elves feeling much, much better. Winker was cooking the turkey. Blinker had peeled lots of potatoes, and Smiler and Titch were busy preparing the Brussels sprouts, so we could all sit down to our Christmas dinner together, as always. Santa Claus is back, cried Titch. Hooray! they all shouted. You made it! As I told them how every toy had been safely delivered. Blinker was looking rather concerned. Do you feel all right, Santa? He asked. I must admit, I said, my head is aching. You do look rather pale, Santa. Winker joined in. <laughs> Santa, you sneezed! 
They all shouted together. Um, just a bit of fluff up my nose. Achoo! Smiler came over, looking very serious. There'll be no Christmas dinner for you, Santa. I think you've got the grotto grumbles. Straight to bed with a large dose of your special medicine. Yes, but... Uh, <laughs> At least the girls and boys all got their presents on time despite me falling asleep. And that, everybody, is how I spent my Christmas day that year. Tucked up in bed with no Christmas pudding and no Christmas cheer.